In this video, we will discuss polynomial functions of higher degree and particularly their graphs. The graph of a polynomial function has the characteristic of being a smooth and continuous curve. First, let's review the definition of a polynomial function. Polynomial function is the sum of terms of x with descending power. The degree of the polynomial function is classified by the highest power of x, n, which is a non-negative integer, a n, a n minus 1, etc. They are the coefficients, and they are all real numbers. They can be any real number except for a n, which is the leading coefficient that cannot be 0. As a special case, if the polynomial function only has one term, it is known as a power function. We already learned about the second degree power function, a squaring function, and a third degree power function, a cubic function. Pay attention to these special points on the graph of these two functions. For power functions of higher degree, if the degree is an even number, for example, for function gx equals to x to the fourth power, this is what the graph looks like. And if you compare this to the graph of the squaring function fx equals to x to the second power, you will notice that they have a similar u shape. They share the same special points, negative 1, 1, 1, 1. However, within the negative 1, 1 interval, the graph of the power function with higher degree is flatter. But outside the negative 1, 1 interval, the graph of the power function with higher degree is steeper. And for power functions with even higher degree, for example, function x to the 6th power or 8th power, this trend continues. For the power function with higher degree, that is the odd number, for example, for this function gx equals to x to the 5th power, this is what the graph looks like. Again, if you compare this graph to the graph of the cubic function, you notice that they have the similar reverse S shape. They also share the same special points, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 1. And similarly, within the interval from negative 1 to positive 1, the graph of the power function with higher degree is flatter. But outside this interval, the graph of the power function with higher degree is steeper. And again, as the degree increases, this trend continues. So that was a special case. But if we have a polynomial function in its general form, how do we sketch it? The first thing we're going to do is called the leading coefficient test, for which we look at the leading coefficient, a n. If a n is positive, then the graph of the polynomial function will have the right tail that goes up. If, on the other hand, the leading coefficient is negative, then for the graph of the polynomial function, it will have a right tail that goes down. The next thing we look at is the degree n of this function. If the degree is an even number, then the left tail of this function will go to the same side as the right tail. On the other hand, if the degree is an odd number, then the left tail of this function graph will go to the opposite side of the right tail. Once again, if the degree is an even number, the left tail goes to the same side as the right tail. If the degree is an odd number, the left tail goes to the opposite side as the right tail. We also need to know the real zeros of the function. Here is a very important property of polynomial function. For a polynomial function fx, if x equals to a is a real zero, which means that x equals to a is a zero to this function and a is a real number. This is equivalent of saying x equals to a is a real solution to the equation fx equals to zero. 
You should know this already. This is how we find the zeros for a function by setting the function equals to zero and solve for x. It is equivalent of saying x minus a is a linear factor to this function. And it is also equivalent to say that a0 represents an x-intercept of the graph of this function. Therefore, if we know the real zeros of this polynomial function, we can plot the x-intercepts, and that can help us sketch the function graph. Lastly, if the polynomial function has a factor x minus a to the kth power, then a is known as a repeated zero for this function. And k is known as the multiplicity, which simply indicates how many times this factor is repeated. If k is an even number, then at the intercept a0, the graph will simply touches the x-axis, but it will not pass across it. However, if k is an odd number, then at the x-intercept a0, the graph of the function will cross the x-axis. Now, with all this information, we are ready to sketch the graph of a polynomial function. Example 1. We need to sketch the function fx equals to x to the fourth power minus 5x squared plus 4. As you can see, the highest power for x is to the fourth power, therefore this is the polynomial function of a fourth degree. To sketch its graph, first step leading coefficient test. In this case, the leading coefficient is 1, which is a positive number. That indicates, for the graph of the polynomial function, the right tail goes up. Step 2, degree. In this case, the degree is 4, which is an even number. And that indicates the left tail of the graph goes to the same direction of the right tail, which is also going up. Step three, to determine the y-intercept, always the easiest. We simply substitute in x equals to zero and solve for the function value to be four. Therefore, the y-intercept is zero, four. Step four, to find the x-intercepts by setting the function to be zero and try to solve for x. In this case, we will be able to factorize this function to be product of four linear factors, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 2, and x plus 2, and that equals to 0. And we can solve for the x value to be x equals to 1, negative 1, 2, or negative 2. These are the solutions to the equation fx equals to 0, and they also correspond to the x-intercepts of this graph of this function. As you can see, none of the zero is repeated. Now we are ready to sketch the graph. Right tail goes up, left tail goes up as well. Y-intercept, X-intercepts. There's no repeat, or you can say each one of them only shows up once, which is an odd number, therefore, the graph will cross the x-axis at each one of these x-intercepts. Based on all this information, here's the graph. When you are sketching the graph for a polynomial function, make sure you do not introduce new x-intercepts that you didn't calculate for. Example two, sketch the function fx equals to negative one-half x minus 1 to the third power multiplied by x plus 2 to the second power. This is a polynomial function already written in the form of the product of linear factors. To sketch this function, again, first thing, leading coefficient test. In this case, the leading coefficient is negative 1 half, and that is negative, which indicates the right tail of this graph goes down. Step 2, degree. The degree of this function is 3 plus 2 that equals to 5, which is an odd number. That tells us the left tail of this graph goes to the opposite direction as the right tail. So in this case, it goes up. Step 3, the y-intercept. 
We determine that simply by substituting x equals to 0 and solve for the function value. So in this case, the y-intercept is 0, 2. Step 4, x-intercepts. Again, we find x-intercepts by setting the function to be 0 and try to solve for x. But in this case, since the function is already given as the product of linear factors, that makes the solving procedure a lot easier. So from this equation, we can solve x to be 1. Notice it is repeated three times, and also x equals to negative 2. Again, notice it is repeated twice. So here are our x-intercepts, 1, 0, and negative 2, 0. Now we are ready to sketch the graph. Right tail goes down, left tail goes up, y-intercept, x-intercept 1, 0, and negative 2, 0. Don't forget, x equals to 1 is a 0 that is repeated three times, which is an odd number of times. That indicates at this intercept, the graph will cross the x-axis. On the other hand, x equals to negative 2 is a 0 that is repeated twice, which is an even number of times, which means that at this x-intercept, the graph will only touch the x-intercept but will not cross it. So based on all these information, this is the graph.